Hey there, I'm Ben from blogwithben.com and welcome to this updated Yoast SEO tutorial. This video is an in-depth step-by-step walkthrough of how to use and configure the free Yoast SEO WordPress plugin so that you can get more visitors from the search engines while also optimizing your content for SEO and overall readability. And I've been using the Yoast SEO plugin since day one of when I started blogwithbin.com. And since then, it's not only streamlined a lot of the technical aspects of SEO, but it's helped me land on the first page of Google, Bing, and Yahoo search results for specific keywords and keyword phrases. The best part about it is that this plugin makes SEO easy. With just a few clicks of the mouse, you can optimize your content for the search engines, which can help you start to see a rankings boost in the search results. Now, if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm glad you found me. Here you'll find full-length step-by-step tutorials on how to build, grow, and monetize WordPress blogs. And if you haven't done so already, I encourage you to subscribe to the Blog With Ben YouTube channel. That way you could stay up to date with all the videos that come out in the future. I also encourage you to subscribe to my mailing list, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes below the video. That way you can gain access to my free ebook, The Blog Starter Kit. All right, with that being said, Let's dive in and take a quick look at what you're gonna learn in this video. So I've broken this video down into four sections. Each section will show you how to set up, configure, and use the plugin to boost your WordPress blog's SEO. Now, I should point out that we'll be using the free version of the Yoast SEO plugin in this video. There is a premium version of the plugin that costs around $89, and if you have the budget for it, I highly recommend investing in it. However, I've been using the free version for years, and as I mentioned earlier in the intro, it's helped me land on the first page of the search results and has taken the guesswork out of the technical aspects of SEO, which has saved me a ton of time and headaches. So with that being said, here are the four main topics we're gonna cover in this video. First, I'm gonna show you how to configure the plugin by using the Yoast SEO Configuration Workout. This tool will help ensure that your site has the optimal SEO settings in place. Next, you're gonna learn how to configure your blog's homepage SEO settings, as well as your social SEO settings. This is super beneficial when it comes to people sharing and visiting the most popular page on your blog, the homepage. Next, you're gonna learn how to configure the SEO settings for your blog's pages and posts. The Yoast SEO plugin streamlines a ton of the SEO features when it comes to optimizing your pages and posts for SEO. And this part of the tutorial will take you through the process of actually putting the plug into use within your blog's content. And finally, we'll walk through some of the additional settings and tips on how you can leverage this powerful plugin to enhance your blog's SEO and page rank. All right, so with that being said, let's get started. So first things first, you'll wanna make sure that you have the Yoast SEO plugin installed and activated on your WordPress site. If you don't, you can easily find it in your WordPress dashboard by hovering your mouse over plugins and clicking on add new. Then within that search field in the upper right hand side of the screen, simply search for Yoast. And it should be one of the very first plugins listed, but you can install and activate the plugin here if you need to. Then after you've installed and activated it, it's time to configure it. So let's head over to the Yoast General Settings page by hovering your mouse over SEO and clicking on General. And this will bring you to the Settings page. And as of December 1st, 2021, Yoast implemented an update to the plugin that totally changed how you configure it. Hence, it's the reason I created this updated tutorial. So what used to be their configuration wizard is now called the configuration workout and you'll see in a few moments, they've basically simplified the configuration process and removed a handful of steps. I'm actually a fan of it, and I'm glad they did it because it'll save you some time and help you get your blog up and running a lot faster. So without further ado, to configure the plugin, click the Yoast SEO Configuration Workout link. And this will bring you to the workout page where you have three options. Now we're using the free version of the plugin in this tutorial, so the first option is all that will be available. However, if you purchase the premium version of the plugin, you'll have a few additional workouts to choose from. Either way, the free version is more than enough to help you optimize your site for the search engines. So to get started, click the Start Workout button. 
And as I mentioned earlier, Yoast simplified the process into five steps. And one thing I want to point out before we get started is that if you need some extra guidance with your configuration, they've created a help guide that you can access here. All right, so the first step in the configuration process is to optimize your SEO data. And this will let the plugin see your site as Google does and helps Yoast give you tips on how to improve technical SEO issues all running in the background. So to start the process, click the Start SEO Data Optimization button. And then depending on how much content you have, it may take a few minutes. So just be patient and sit tight as the progress bar moves along. And it seems to be going pretty fast at the moment. And just a few more seconds, almost there. Perfect. And then once it's done, you'll get a notification letting you know that the data optimization is complete. And then you can go ahead and click the continue button to move on to the next step. Next, Yoast wants to help you better represent your site on the search engines. And if you're unfamiliar with a Google knowledge panel, Here's a quick example of Denzel Washington's. Now, he's obviously a huge superstar and has a Wikipedia page which Google is pulling from to use in the knowledge panel. But if you don't have a Wikipedia page, Google will pull the information from the Yoast SEO plugin and present it here when people search for your blog. Again, this is just one of those things that can help you leverage SEO to drive traffic to your site. So the first question is asking if you're an organization or a person. If you're running a blog like I am in this video, you'll want to switch this to person. So from the drop down menu, just select person. Then below that, you'll be asked to select the name of the user that's associated with the site. So within that drop down, select your user profile. Next is the person logo or avatar. And this is like a featured image that will be used within the search results, specifically the knowledge panel. So click the select image button and upload an image that you want to use. I'm just using a placeholder here, but I recommend using some sort of branded imagery for your logo slash avatar. And there we go. The final part of this section, we have the site tagline. Now by default, it's using the tagline from your blog, but you can change what displays within Google's knowledge panel here if you'd like. All right, moving on. So go ahead and click the save and continue button. Next are the social profiles. And this will help the search engine bots know what social networks your blog is associated with. Again, this is important because when the search engines crawl your site and see that you're connected to multiple popular social networks and you have a following, it can give you more authority and help to boost your search engine ranking. So to let the search engines know about your social profiles, you'll need to update your user profile within WordPress. And again, this is actually handled in your WordPress dashboard. So we'll address this in a few minutes after we're done configuring the plugin. So let's go ahead and move on to the final two steps of the configuration workout. So below that is number four, and Yoast is asking you for permission to collect certain anonymous information about your site and how you use it. So go ahead and say yes or no here and click the save and continue button. And then finally, they're asking you to sign up to their newsletter. Now I actually recommend doing this. Yoast has a ton of helpful content that they send to their subscribers that can help you improve your blog's SEO. So sign up here if you'd like. And then that's pretty much it for the configuration workout. So go ahead and click the finish this workout button. And then in a few seconds, you should get a notification letting you know that you've successfully configured the plugin. However, you still need to update your social profiles, which we're gonna do in your WordPress user profile. So click the view other SEO workouts button. And real quick, if you're seeing this huge SEO issue warning, don't freak out. This just means that you need to make a quick change within your reading settings. And we're gonna go through that towards the end of the video. All right, so like I said, we still need to update your social profiles within your WordPress user profile. And this will help the search engine bots know what social networks your blog is associated with. So first things first, hover your mouse over users and click on profile. Then scroll down to the website section. And all you're going to do is enter the URL of your blog, followed by all of the social networks that you're associated with. 
and simply enter the URLs of each one in the fields provided. Then once you have that all filled out, scroll down and don't forget to save your changes by clicking the update profile button and moving on. All right, the next thing we're going to configure for the plugin is the search appearance of our homepage. And what I mean by this is that we're going to edit how the search engines and social media channels display our blog when people either search for it online or share it on social media. So on the left-hand side of the screen, hover your mouse over SEO and click on search appearance. And the first two things we can configure are the title separator and the homepage. And if we take a look at our blog really quick, you can see what the SEO title and title separator will look like on your homepage. And as you can see, it's currently using our site title and then a title separator followed by the tagline best of both worlds. This will also be used in the search results as well. So if we head back to the Yoast search appearance settings, you can change what the SEO title looks like on your homepage tab and the search results within the SEO title section. Now by default, Yoast is using what they call variables, but you can easily delete these out and simply type in what you want the title and title separator to be. Then below that is the meta description. This is a brief description that's going to be shown in the search results that you can edit within this text box here as well. And when creating your meta description, try to use keywords that you're wanting to rank for and try to keep it within 155 characters. All right, moving on to the social settings. And this is where you can modify the image title and description used when someone links to your homepage and shares it via social media. And the process to update this is very similar to your homepage SEO settings. By default, the social title is using your site title, but you could always remove the site title variable like so, and then simply type in your desired site title and tagline, as well as the social description. Then I saved uploading the image for the last step because I'm gonna be using the same image for the social and knowledge graph images. So all we're gonna do here is add the social image and logo to these two sections to help enhance our food blog's search appearance. What this is doing is it's basically telling the search engines to use these images we're about to upload whenever your blog's homepage is shared on social media and when your knowledge profile is displayed within the Google search results. Having a professional image to represent your site on social and the search results is a best practice, but it's also great for brand recognition and brand loyalty. And if you don't have an image, you can easily create one on canva.com, and I'll put a link to that in the show notes. And speaking of creating your image, here's a list of the recommended image sizes for Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. And they have the image dimensions listed out based off of what type of image you're using and where you're using it. However, for this example, we're going to be using a landscape image that's 1200 by 630 pixels. This is the recommended image size for a landscape image on Facebook, but it will fit nicely with most social media channels. And then I'm going to spare you having to sit through the entire process of me creating this image. But as you can see, I've used canva.com to create the image and I'm using 1200 by 630 pixels for the dimensions but the image is basically mimicking the logo of this particular blog. And I'm obviously speeding through this part of the video, but you get the idea. Canva is super easy to use. Then back at the blog, under the social settings section, click the select image button. And then we're gonna be uploading the image that we just created. So within the media library, click the upload files link and then click the Select Files button. And then find the image that you want to use. Then once you have the image, don't forget to update the alt text and title within the attachment details. This is a best practice and good for SEO as well. Then click the select button. And we now have a beautiful social image that will be displayed across all social networks when our homepage is shared. Next, let's do the same thing for the knowledge graph. So follow the same steps to add the image. 
And then we're just using the exact same image that we just uploaded. And there we go, it looks great. And don't forget to save your changes. And our settings have been saved. I know these things may seem trivial and somewhat tedious, but they can go a long way when it comes to your SEO and brand recognition. All right, moving on. Next, I'm gonna show you how to configure the Yoast SEO settings for your blog's pages and posts. So for this example, I'm gonna be configuring the Yoast SEO settings for my About page. However, please note that the steps we're about to cover can be used for your blog's posts as well. These are essentially the same steps, but like I said, we'll be configuring the SEO settings for my About page. So first things first, let's access the back end of that particular page. So go to your pages management menu within your WordPress dashboard. And then I'm going to edit the about page. Then once you're in the WordPress editor, you can begin to configure the Yoast plugin settings for the page content. And I should point out that this is a demo blog that I've already added some placeholder content to, but you'll wanna be sure and configure your Yoast page and post settings after you've created your content. I always create my blog posts and pages first, then I configure the Yoast SEO settings before I publish them. That's just my recommended process for using the plugin. And then to access the plugin, if you scroll down to the bottom of the page within the WordPress editor, you'll see the Yoast settings if you've installed and activated that plugin. And you can also access the Yoast SEO settings in the upper right hand side of the screen here as well. Both will help you optimize your pages and posts for the search engines. Okay, so the Yoast SEO plugin is a powerful tool and should be used every time you create a page or post on your blog. And if you look towards the top of the plugin, you'll see some of the features available, like setting your focus keyword, creating your Google snippet, schema and social settings, as well as a readability analysis, which we'll cover in a few moments. Okay, so now that you have a brief overview of the plugin, let's take a closer look at how to use it. So the first thing that you can do is set your focus keyword or key phrase. This is where you can tell Yoast the keyword or key phrase that you're trying to rank for. And once you've set your keyword, the plugin analyzes the content, determine whether or not you're using that focus keyword in a way that benefits your SEO. Plus, after adding the keyword, you'll be given an SEO grade that helps you optimize your content for the search engines. Below that is the Google Snippet Editor. And this is where you can configure how the search engines see your Google Snippet. And the cool thing about this is that Google gives you a mobile and desktop preview of what that snippet will look like as you edit it. And you can toggle between the two previews here but again, this is super helpful when it comes to optimizing your snippet for the search engines. Then below the preview is where you can edit the snippet. And first is the SEO title. Now by default, Yoast starts you off with what is called snippet variables of the title and the page dash separator followed by the site title. And you can easily add or remove the variables or you can remove them completely and just type out your SEO title. And one thing I wanna point out is that this is only changing how your title looks in the search engines, not the actual title on your page or blog post. Now you'll also probably notice the orange line moving below your text as you type. And this feature helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines and lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet by turning green. Next is the slug. And the slug is just your permalink. So whatever comes after the .com of your page will show up here. Below that is the meta description. And this is the preview text that people see when they search for your blog post on a search engine. So to change it within the meta description box, simply start typing a preview of your post. And you'll wanna be sure to use keywords and make it enticing to help improve your click-through rate. And you'll probably notice the orange line moving below your text as you type this is the same feature as the SEO title field, and it helps you stay within the character limit set forth by Google and other search engines, and also lets you know when you should stop adding content to the snippet by turning green. And there we go. Then below that, we have the SEO analysis. And once you've entered your focus keyword, 
the SEO analysis checks the presence of your focus key phrase or keywords throughout the content of your page. The plugin will then reward you with a colored bullet based off of its findings and tell you what is good and what needs to be worked on. Now Yoast states that when you follow the instructions and craft your pages and posts so that they get green bullets, they have a better chance of ranking higher on the search results. However, you don't need a green bullet every time, so don't stress too much if it's not green. Next, we have the cornerstone content feature. This is a new feature of the plugin that lets you mark the most important and extensive articles or pages on your blog. This is important because it's telling the search engines which places of content are the most important. And providing the correct internal link structure between your posts and pages tells Google which content is the most important and has a positive impact on your ranking. So if this page is a cornerstone piece, which it is, go ahead and flip the switch to mark it as a cornerstone piece of content. Next, there are some advanced settings where you could tell the search engines not to show this page in the search results. You could set the meta robots, breadcrumb titles, and canonical URL, but for this tutorial, we aren't going to worry about those features, so you can go ahead and skip those. Next, if we close this and then scroll up and click on the readability tab, This will show you the readability analysis. And this uses an algorithm to determine how readable your page or post is. And Yoast has carefully crafted this algorithm to make it as accurate as possible without being too strict. It features several checks that'll give you advice when to write your post. In other words, by following the advice, you can make your text easier to read and understand, which is good for the overall user experience and the SEO. Now, you'll probably notice that Yoast gives you a score on your readability and SEO analysis, resulting in a colored smiley face. Red is bad, green is good, and I'm using dummy text in the post, so it obviously isn't going to be good. However, should all of your bullets be green? Well, Yoast says no, not every bullet and smiley face should be green, but you should aim for a green, happy bullet overall. Having an orange bullet for one of the checks is okay, your article will still be able to rank even if it doesn't pass all the tests. This is merely an indication, not a necessity. Next, we have the schema tab. And this is a somewhat advanced and technical aspect of, of SEO, but schema is markup. And it's found at schema.org, and it's a form of microdata. And once added to a web page, schema markup creates an enhanced description which appears in search results. And top search engines like Google, Yahoo, and Bing all collaborated to create schema.org back in 2011. So it is important to your SEO, but Yoast does a lot of the heavy lifting for you. So I recommend leaving these alone for now, but you have the option to configure them if you'd like. And last but not least, we have the social tab. And this allows you to fill out the social data for the page. This means that you could tell social media channels like Facebook and Twitter what to show whenever you share this page on their platform. You can add a social description, title, and an image here as well. Again, for the sake of time, I'm skipping past this, but if you know you're going to be sharing these pages and posts across Facebook and Twitter, then it makes sense to update this social data here. Okay, so that's the Yoast SEO plugin in a nutshell. But one final thing I want to point out is that within the page settings on the right-hand side of the screen, you'll see that the Yoast SEO tab gives you a quick snapshot of the readability and SEO analysis of the page. Just a heads up on that. All right, so after you've configured the Yoast SEO settings for your content within the page, you'll wanna be sure and click the update button. This will ensure that your changes are published and saved. All right, moving on to the final portion of the tutorial, where we're going to cover some of the additional features of the plugin, as well as tips to help boost your blog's SEO and page rank. Okay, so the first thing I wanna show you are some of the additional settings you can configure with the plugin. So let's head to the general settings page real quick. And then you'll see that each section has various tabs or additional settings and features that you can configure within the plugin. Now by default, the Yoast SEO plugin sets them up for you after you install the plugin. And I must say that the default settings are fairly strong as is, so I personally don't mess with them too much, but it's nice to know where they are and what they can do. So let's quickly go over them. Okay, first let's take a look at the features tab. 
And this is basically home base for the majority of the Yoast plugin features. You can enable and disable them below by flipping the switches on and off. And then if you want more information about what they do, click on the circle question mark for more info. Now again, I recommend leaving them as is, and you'll see that you can't even access all the features if you're using the free version. However, let me show you a cool tip. So one really neat thing you can do here is you can generate and access your XML sitemap. And if you're unfamiliar with what that is, it's basically an easy way for you to inform search engines about pages on your site that are available for crawling. A sitemap is a file where you can list the web pages of your site to tell Google and other search engines about the organization of your site's content. Search engine web crawlers like Googlebot read this file to crawl your blog. Bottom line, having a sitemap is good for SEO. So to view your sitemap, just make sure the sitemap lever is switched to on, and it is. Then click on the little question mark icon and then click on the see the XML sitemap link and this will take you to your sitemap. Now it doesn't look like much, but trust me, this is very important to your blog. This is also what you'll submit to all the major search engines in order for your blog to be properly indexed. All in all, the fact that Yoast takes care of a lot of the heavy lifting and automatically creates an XML sitemap for you is super cool and is one of those things that it does in the background that can have a major impact on your blog's SEO. All right, moving on. Next, we have integrations. And this is where you can integrate the Yoast SEO plugin with third-party products if you're using them. Then the final tab of the general section is Webmaster Tools. And this is where you can use the boxes below to verify with the different Webmaster Tools like Google and Bing. And if you're unfamiliar with verification, it's basically the process of proving that you own the web property. And once verified, search engines like Google will grant you access to sensitive Google search data for the site, which can affect your site's presence and behavior on Google search and other Google properties. So Yoast gives you the ability to verify your site through the plugin. Simply follow the links to the different webmaster tools and look for instructions for the verification method to get the verification code. However, if your site is already verified, you can just forget about these. If you aren't verified with Google and you don't feel comfortable using the plugin, I have a step-by-step -step tutorial that's on my YouTube channel that walks you through the process of getting verified by Google. I'll put a link to that in the show notes as well. All right, moving on to the search appearance settings. So hover your mouse over SEO and click on search appearance in your WordPress dashboard. Then if you look towards the top of the screen, you'll see that this section has additional tabs as well. There are content types, media, taxonomy, archives, breadcrumbs, and RSS. Again, each tab contains various settings that you can configure to enhance your SEO. So let's take a look at the content types tab. And this gives you the ability to specify what the default search appearance should be for any type of content you have. You can choose which content types appear in search results and what their default description should be. And by default, they mean that this will be used if you don't configure the Yoast SEO settings for a particular page or post. And as you can see, you can change the default SEO settings for your posts. And if you scroll down, you can see you can change it for your pages. And this blog is using the Easy Index plugin, so I have indexes and I can edit them here as well. And you're probably noticing that you have to pay for the premium version of the plugin in order to unlock the social settings for your content. Either way, this is where you can specify the default search appearance for your blog's content. And if you haven't done so already, I recommend that you at least add a meta description for each content type. All right, moving on to media. And this is basically for whenever you upload media, like an image or a video to your WordPress site. So whenever you upload media to your WordPress site, it doesn't just save the media, 
WordPress creates an attachment URL for it. So you're basically creating additional empty pages on your site that can potentially have a negative impact on SEO. So if you never use those attachment URLs, it's better to disable them, which is the default setting of the plugin. So you're good to go there. Moving on to taxonomies. And these are things like your categories, tags, and post formats. And this is where you can configure the SEO settings for each taxonomy. Again, the Yoast default settings are pretty good, but I recommend at least adding a meta description for each one here as well. Next, we have the archives. And Yoast states that if you're running a one author blog, the author archive page will be exactly like your homepage. And this is what's called duplicate content, which is not good for SEO. And if this is the case on your site, you can choose to either disable it, which makes it redirect to the homepage, or add no index, no follow to it, so it doesn't show up in the search results. Either way, Yoast turns your author archives off by default, which will help you avoid duplicate content issues. Then there are also some settings for your date archives and special pages, like your 404 page, but I recommend leaving the default settings in place. Next are the breadcrumb settings. And if you're unfamiliar with what breadcrumbs are, they're basically a secondary navigation system that shows a user's location on a site. And they look like this on the WordPress theme Kale, which is what I'm using in this video. And you can add breadcrumbs to each page and post by adding the Yoast breadcrumb block at the top of your content within the WordPress editor. Then within the Yoast breadcrumb settings, you can get specific on how you want them to display on your site. Now, I could sometimes get confusing if you're new to the topic, so I recommend checking out this link here where Yoast has created a helpful article on how to implement Yoast SEO breadcrumbs. And they also have a great video that walks you through the implementation process as well. All right, moving on next, we have the RSS settings. And this feature is used to automatically add content to your RSS feed. More specifically, it's meant to add links back to your blog and your blog posts. And this helps search engines identify you as the original source of content. Now, unless you know what you're doing, I just recommend leaving this as is. All right, moving right along to the social settings. And this is where you can configure some of the SEO settings for the social networks that you're associated with. Okay, so starting with Facebook, Yoast gives you the ability to enable or disable the open graph metadata and add a default image that's used anytime someone shares your site on Facebook. Next, we have Twitter. And here you can configure the card metadata and card type used on Twitter. And this is how Twitter will display a preview with an image and text excerpt when a link of your site is shared on Twitter. And finally, there's Pinterest. And the plugin allows you to confirm your site with your Pinterest account. Just follow the steps outlined in this link and add the meta tag in the field below. All right, the last feature of the plugin that we're gonna cover are the tools. And these built-in tools allow you to do some pretty advanced things like import and export your Yoast SEO settings to another blog. There's also a file editor that allows you to quickly change important files for your SEO. You have a bulk editor where you can quickly change titles and descriptions for your posts and pages without having to go into the editor for each page. And then the optimize SEO data tool. I recommend doing this if you haven't done it already. It takes a few minutes, but it can help speed up your site and give you insight into your internal linking structure. Now you can activate the data tool here, or you should be able to do it via your general settings dashboard of the Yoast SEO plugin. Now, I obviously already activated the data tool before I created this tutorial, so I can't show you how it's done, but just reach out in the comments if you need some help using the tool or click this link to learn more about the benefits of using it. Okay, there are two more sections of the plugin, premium and workouts. These are geared towards selling you the premium version of the Yoast SEO plugin if you have the budget for it. And like I said, I highly recommend the premium version, but if your budget's tight, the free version can have a very positive impact on your blog's SEO and page rank. Okay, so there's one final tip I wanna go over before we close out. If you recall, after we went through the Yoast configuration workout, we got this warning about a huge SEO issue. 
Now, if you're not seeing this, then you could skip this part of the tutorial, but if you are seeing this, then you'll need to make one small change to ensure that your site is indexed by the search engines. So within your WordPress dashboard, hover your mouse over settings and click on reading. Then towards the bottom of the screen there, next to the search engine visibility section, simply uncheck that box so that you won't discourage search engines from indexing your site. And then don't forget to click the Save Changes button and your settings have been saved. All right, and then let's head back to the general dashboard really quick. And all in all, I know SEO can be tricky to learn whenever you're just starting out, but the Yoast SEO plugin helps simplify a lot of the technical aspects of SEO and can teach you a lot in the process. I've learned a ton just by using the plugin. And as always, if you get stuck, Yoast has some great help documentation that you can access by clicking on the question mark icon within your dashboard. And as you can see, they offer a ton of free resources to help you make sense of SEO. So that's gonna do it for this video. If you found it helpful, I'd greatly appreciate it if you would like, comment, share, and subscribe to the Blog with Ben YouTube channel. Also, now that you've started your blog, check out these two videos on email marketing and blog monetization. They'll help you grow your audience and earn a passive income with your blog. And as always, your support means a great deal to me and my family. And for that, I thank you. So with that being said, I'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching.